everyone. Uh, I'm coming to you from home. My name is Haley. I'm one of the new art assistants in the art room at Chrysalis. This is actually my second week at work, so uh, hello. This week we're going to keep with the theme of butterflies, and for that I have this handy book here on insects, uh, which I'm going to use to draw from, and you can use as well. I'll show you some of the images inside. And together we are going to make a, a drawing that's very expressive and we're going to have fun with colors this week. Alright, so before we get started, we'll just look at some of our materials. I'm using uh, a pencil. I have these pens for inking. Uh, you don't have to have these, this is just something I like to use. Um, and then uh, we also have some markers. I'd recommend choosing three colors, probably at most. Um, it's completely up to you, but I like to keep things simple. And if you don't have markers, you can also use pencil crayons. Those work just as well. Um, I use markers because I like how bold they are and how vibrant the colors are. But pencil crayons work really well too. And then finally, you just need some paper. I am using pink paper. That is because I only have pink paper right now. You don't have to use pink paper. Just use whatever you have available to you. So here we have all about the insect world. It has a really beautiful illustration of a butterfly on the front. And we are going to be looking specifically at this illustration of a morning cloak butterfly and we'll be using the shape of the illustration as inspiration for our drawing and we'll be drawing the butterfly fully open so that we can think about the uh, patterns and expressiveness of their wings. This is a close-up of the illustration from the book. While we won't be copying the illustration exactly, it does give us a idea for form and what we can do, how the wings overlap, and the size of the body relative to the wings. So it's good reference material. But because uh, we're focusing more on our own expression today, the design of the butterfly will be completely up to you. Also, fun fact, different butterflies like to eat different things, even when they're caterpillars. So before a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, they have specific tastes for specific types of plants. So some caterpillars prefer eating clover, other caterpillars will only eat from certain types of trees. So they're, they're kind of fussy eaters, which is interesting. This is a drawing of a butterfly that I made earlier to show you what we'll be doing and what we're working towards. I'll take you through the process step by step and we're going to start by drawing the body. Butterflies are naturally symmetric, so it's good to start with the body as a focal point because everything will radiate from the body. And butterflies have a small head uh, with their mouth on top, and then they have their bodies, which comes in two sections, and you can draw them like long ovals that are connecting. So that's part one of your body, and then there's a shorter oval at the bottom. So like that. Now, right at the top here where the butterfly's mouth is are also its antennas. And these you can draw in a variety of ways. You could make them curly if you'd like. You could draw them really long. You could draw them really short. It really depends on your butterfly. There's also some texture on the body, which I'm going to add in now to indicate form and shading. So you can have some really fun lines here to, to showcase that. And then we'll do some at the bottom to finish it off. 
All right, so my body is pretty much done, which means that I can move on to creating the wings. So butterflies have four wings, and the wings will start at the same points because, again, we want to have that symmetry. So kind of like how your arms start at the same point on your body, so do a butterfly's wing. So you can uh, make some guiding points up near the head for where your wings are going to start, and that'll help uh, create that symmetry. So you're going to take your first line from the side, and you're going to bring it up and out. And then you're going to want to do the same over here. But it can be hard to uh, draw things the same on both sides. So one trick that you can use with this kind of drawing is you can take your fingers and you can measure how far you brought out that first line from the body and bring it over to the other side. So you have an idea and make a little dot maybe of where to draw your line to. So now I know roughly how far to go. You also want to bring it up to about the same height. So let's see, let's... There we go. So we've got our two lines there. We're also going to decide on where the wings come back to. So still using dots will indicate that beside the body. So these should be equal. And here, you're going to create a frilly structure, some fun lines for the shape of your wing. So I brought it in and out. I did a bit of a wavy line. and you're going to try to mirror that on the other side. So, how many did I do? One, two, three. So, one, two, three. And then I'm going to bring it in and back up. Okay, so I have my top two wings done. And then uh, you're going to do the same for the bottom. And you're going to want the top wings to overlap with the bottom wings. So this bottom wing is underneath the top one. So we're going to start over here to show that. And bring it out and down and up. Okay, and then We'll do the same. So, get an idea. All right, bring that up there. So, we'll bring it out, down, and out. Alright, so it's not perfect, but that's okay. We still have um, kind, of, kind of a mirror happening. And then this is the point where you can add more details or make things darker if you want. I like to sometimes add some more motion to my lines and make them more fun. And you can do that by going over them. Yeah, if you're someone who likes to add details, this is a great time for that. If you could add more texture to the body of the butterfly. We'll just go around. Great. Here we're going to move into adding designs to the wings using the colors that we picked earlier. I have teal, pink, and yellow, and I'm using teal here to work into the body to create shadows, and then adding yellow as highlights to give more volume and shape. And then when you're thinking about the designs on your wings, it's entirely up to you 
But you have to think about what's the purpose of your butterfly? Where does it live? Is it a butterfly that likes to hide? Is it really good at camouflage? Or is it sending out a, a warning signal to predators? Does it have really bright colors that say, don't eat me? Uh, or um, is it really showy and gentle? And so those are some things to consider when you're, when you're laying things out. You're going to keep the same symmetry that you did while you were drawing. So you'll be completing the same design on each wing. So I find it helpful to do something on one wing and then complete it on the other, just so you get that symmetry right away. And then be as expressive as you can with this. Uh, this is the part where you get to show your personality and, and what you're about. And this is an image of the completed drawing. Uh, I've added a a second design here as well. You can draw as many butterflies as you want and try all different types of designs. I've also done a, a crocodile underneath my butterfly because sometimes butterflies are known to just rest on sunbathing crocodiles. And then we're going to finish here with an image of from the book that we looked at earlier. And you can use this while you're drawing as well so that you have a reference uh, to use for your drawing. You can also go back through the video and look at my drawing process again. You can pause the video, whatever you need to do, take your time. And I just wanted to say it was really nice. I can't see any of you, but it was really nice to meet everyone. And we'll get back together again next week to draw together soon.